Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lewis, and I am currently set in this amazing McLaren 720S. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you guys around the car, we're gonna take it for a spin, and then afterwards, I'm gonna break down all the numbers for this car. What it costs new, what it costs used, what the finance and leasing payments look like, and how much you should be making annually in order to bring something like this home. So this car is Amethyst Black, which on a cloudy day like today, it looks black but on most days when it's sunny, the car really looks purple. Um, so it's kind of like a two-tone paint. The owner of this car has only had two cars that aren't black. Um, his previous McLaren, which was a 650S, that car was storm gray. And the only reason he chose this color was because it looks black most of the time. The car has the lightweight wheel options, which I prefer. I'm not a big fan of the standard wheels. Something that the owner tells me is really annoying about this car is this little gap space uh, right here. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of little rocks stuck in here. He said that that just happens all the time and it's almost impossible to get them out. And they actually st like scratch throughout this area. This mesh is supposed to stop the rocks from getting in here. But it honestly doesn't help at all because the rocks that are going through there are much smaller than the mesh. One of my favorite parts of the car is the rear end. I think it's so much more aggressive than the front. And the active rear wing looks so good when you're braking under load. Um, it really just stands out from the Sport Series cars since you can only have the active rear wing on the Super Series cars. All right, now that we're in the car, let's take a look at this interior which I really like. Uh, it's filled with Alcantara. It has Alcantara on the um, headliner, on the doors, on the seats, on the dash, and on the steering wheel. I'm not the biggest fan of Alcantara on steering wheels. I like it throughout the rest of the car, but on the steering wheel, I think sometimes it fades, and it doesn't look that great when it fades. This car, uh, the steering wheel still looks pretty good, but the top, you can tell, is starting to fade a little bit, and I'm just not a big fan of that. The car actually has a really practical interior. You have the space in the back where you can fit a small bag, maybe like a weekend bag. And then you have two cup holders, one in the front and one in the back be behind the infotainment screen. The one in the back super small. Um, I don't think you'd be able to fit a big water bottle there, but the one in the front is pretty big and you can probably fit a decent sized water bottle. One of my favorite parts of this interior is the digital gauge. When you put it in track mode, the screen folds down so that you can see more of the road and it kind of just displays only the information that you need or would need on the track. You also get this pocket on the side of the door that opens when the doors close, but when you open the door, it automatically locks so that nothing falls out. And I think that's just really good design. All right. Ooh. First off, you really have to hit the brakes. Yes. They don't stop if you just Carb like... Carbon ceramics are either, they're either on or they're off. Yeah, like so, I barely tapped them and the car did not stop at all. Right. I had to really like hit them. And, and That's and, strange. And I have to warn you now, Yeah. if we're at a light or a stop sign, you have to press on the brake. You can't leave your foot resting. It will not stop. In other words, right wait, now, so wait, if you rest you your mean? foot, the car yes. will start moving. Oh, okay. It has yeah, to oh, be oh, on. Yeah, I just, see? You just did it. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, you, you see, those are things that yeah. like I've... I've watched maybe a million reviews on this car and no one has ever said that. Yeah, you have to press it, you have to hold it. I've caught myself with the car creeping at lights yeah. more often than I, than, yeah. than I should. That could be dangerous because you're Absolutely. on your phone and like it just starts creeping. It looks like the other car's reversing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Downshifts feel really good. But yeah, you're right. You have to hit that brake. If not, it like creeps. It creeps. That's yeah. really strange. I didn't think McLaren's creeped. I thought that when you let go of the brake, they kind of just stayed until you no, hit the... remember the Lamborghini didn't creep. The clutch yeah. did not engage until you hit the gas, and that's why people would burn up their e-gears. Yeah. Because they would hit the gas hard off the line, and yeah. it would burn the clutch. Yeah. And that's why mine lasted so long, is I would, I would ease into it, then slam on it. I drove that car once, and... I, it was so weird taking off. Like I took off and the whole car like started jittering. That's because you it felt it's like popping a clutch. Same yeah. idea. That's a weird car to drive, but I think out of all the cars that Alan's owned, um, this one, this I think this one's my favorite because you know it's the fastest. But that Lamborghini was amazing. It, it was. Just, I, I don't miss, think I miss. nothing sounded like that Lamborghini. <laughs> Wow. 
questions for Al. All right, first question. Have you had any issues with the car? Little things. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing terribly serious. The car never broke down on me, uh, although I had to have it towed. Um, I believe twice I had a coolant leak in this car. Yeah. I think it was twice. So I had a, uh, a, a piece on my engine lid that broke. We don't even know how. They replaced it though, which was nice of them. Yeah. Um, there were uh, a piece right behind that that covers the engine was loose. They had it tight and the bolts came loose. Okay. Inside the car, the piece where your uh, seatbelt goes into the leather came loose on both sides. They had to uh, tighten that. Okay. My gas lid uh, fell off uh, more than once. Mm -hmm. My front hood latch wasn't catching properly. They had to fix that. There was that strange clicking noise in my car. What is that mysterious ticking noise? Um, that they couldn't diagnose until the third time. Oh, I remember this. Right, and yeah. it turned out that my shocks were uh, malfunctioning. There's a piece of rubber that runs along the outside of your glass or carbon fiber. Yeah. And mine was collapsing into the car. My alarm was going off unprovoked in the middle of the night. I would just randomly hear my alarm go off. <laughs> That's really funny. So they reset it and reset it. They did the, They reset it probably three times and now it's not doing it anymore. All right, good. Uh, drove my wife nuts. And it only the, took and three times. Only three times. Yep. There's one AC vent dead center in the car that you press it and it and it turns on, press it again, it turns off, and it throws a lot of air. Mm -hmm. It wasn't clicking, it wasn't staying in place. There was a clicking in my steering wheel at a slow speed that was very annoying. On my driver door, this you'll remember, okay. there was what looked like rust along the entire so underside of my, my passenger door, I mean. Yeah. It was all bubbly under the paint, and of course they had, they paid for it, yeah. and they replaced the entire door skin. Next question uh, is, is it true that having an exotic car gets you a bunch of girls, or is it more like a bunch of dudes asking if they could shoot a YouTube video with you? There's probably more guys that come up to me. Uh, no, hands down, more guys that hands come up to me. Hands down, more guys. Hands down. This is what McLaren ownership is actually like. Next question. Next question is, how many times a day do you get asked by people driving minivans want to trade? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> constantly. Constantly. <laughs> like uh, the guys like yesterday, the guys yesterday that came in to put the basketball hoop in my house. Yeah. He threw me his keys. No, he threw you I his was, keys. I was getting out of the car and he threw his keys to me and then he held his hand out <laughs> waiting for me to throw mine. One more question for the gram. Can I borrow the car for the weekend? <laughs> All right. Are you on drugs right now? Because... <laughs> <laughs> oh so that oh uh, my god yeah so you were spinning tires through first and second just oh, now wow and as you can see the car goes straight as an arrow i mean that is crazy yeah, yeah. oh my god you're shifting way too early but you can feel you were We were at Cars and Coffee, and he had his Murcielago, he was there, and he saw a scratch on the rear quarter <laughs> panel, maybe like this big, and you could, like it was a noticeable scratch. I kid you not, in front of everybody, he pulls out a Sharpie, and Sharpies the scratch, and he just goes on with his day. It works. It worked. So. Yeah, temporary, temporary It fix. was temporary. All right guys, well, that's gonna be it for me. I've been driving this car for a while. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, man. Of I really appreciate it. And now for the good stuff, exactly what you guys have been waiting for the whole video, and that is the full breakdown of how much this car costs to own on a monthly basis. Let's start with what this car costs brand new. And the average new price for a McLaren 720S right now on the internet is $325,000, which is an insane amount of money if you think that it's just a car. That's as much as a house. And honestly, I still rather have the car. For the sake of making this video easy, I'm gonna assume you have good credit because chances are you wouldn't get approved for any of the finance or lease deals that I'm gonna talk about if you don't have good credit. I'm also gonna use 4.7% as the average interest rate for both the finance deal 
and the lease deal. And then for the finance deal, I'm gonna use a 72 month term. And for the lease deal, I'm gonna use a 36 month term. Okay, so here we go. With 0% down on a brand new McLaren 720S, your finance payments will be $5,536.66. Now, if you were to lease the car with 0% down, your monthly payments would be $4,000. $523.49. So now we're putting 10% down, which is $32,500. With 10% down on a finance deal, you're looking at $5,017.76 a month. Now with the same 10% down on a lease deal, you're looking at $3,553.81. Now with 20% down, which is what I would recommend, the payments definitely drop a lot more. You're looking at a finance deal of $4,498.85 and a lease deal of $2,584.13 a month. So that's obviously a lot of money. But now let's check out what the car is trading for in the used car market and how much the payments would be if you bought the car used. I definitely recommend always checking what the car costs in the used car market because you'd be surprised. You can save a bunch of money. On average, I think it's like 25%. And for the McLaren 720S, the average used car price is 240,000, which means if you were to get the car used with barely any miles on it, you're instantly saving $85,000. You can buy yourself a used Porsche Cayman T for $85,000. That means with the money you're saving getting the McLaren 720S used, you can buy yourself a Porsche. So using the same terms as I used for the new car, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys the monthly payments for a used McLaren 720S. So with 0% down on a used McLaren 720S, you're looking at a finance monthly payment of $4,088.61 and a lease monthly payment of $3,340. With 10% down, which is $24,000, you're looking at a monthly finance amount of $3,705.42 and a lease monthly payment of $2,624.35. Now, with 20% down, this is where things get pretty interesting because your finance amount is only $3,324.24. Now, that's a lot of money, but the lease deal is $1,908.28, which honestly isn't that much money for the amount of car that you're getting. And you only have to put down $48,000. Now trust me, I know that's a lot of money, but if you were to save for this car, maybe for a year or two, the chances of you being able to save 48,000 by cutting back certain things is pretty likely. You'll still need to get approved for the car in order to get the lease payment. So let's talk about how much money banks and lenders are usually looking for you to be making in order to get approved for these deals. One sec, coffee break. I'm gonna run through these pretty quick because everyone's financial situation is different. Uh, it can kind of go either way based on your monthly expenses. But typically, if you wanna buy the car new, you'll need to make around $350,000 to $425,000. And that's with zero down. If you're putting 10% down, you'll need to make around $275,000 to $400,000. And if you're putting 20% down, you'll need to make $200,000 to $350,000. And obviously the lower end of those numbers are for the lease deals. Now for used McLaren 720S, those numbers are obviously a little lower. With 0% down, you're gonna need to make $260,000 to $325,000. With 10% down, you're gonna need to make $200,000 to $285,000 a year. And with 20% down, this is where it gets interesting again, guys. You only need to make $150,000 to $250,000. And obviously, if you're getting the lease deal, they're really only going to be looking for around $150,000 a year income with that $48,000 down. So obviously, making $150,000 a year and putting down $48,000 a year is a lot of money. But... I know for a fact that there are a lot of jobs out there that pay $150,000 a year 
or a lot of businesses that you can start that will make you 150,000 or more a year. All right, car people, I hope you liked that video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.